Where are people marked? This is where it gets really interesting. Revelation 14.1, Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Well, it said the seal of God in their foreheads. Here it says their father's name in their foreheads. Now, this is a group that is saved, and they've got something in their foreheads. You know, you go to the average person on the street and say, you know, as we enter the last days, you've read Revelation, would you let anyone put anything in your forehead? And they go, no way. They think it's only the beast that's going to be marking. Everyone gets marked. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel. And uh, this will not be on the screen. If you don't have a Bible or a Bible on your phone, um, then just uh, listen carefully. A prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 9, and I, I can't read it all, but I want to especially read to you Oh, well, let me see. I'll start with uh, if my pages will stop sticking together here. Or oh, it's stubborn. There we go. All right, let's see. I'll start with verse uh, 3. Ezekiel 9, 3. Now the glory of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherub where it had been. This is in the temple that's happening. To the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with it linen who had a writer's inkhorn at his side. Again, it's apocalyptic. It's got imagery in it. And the Lord said to him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. This is where God's people are. And put a mark on the forehead. Revelation is based on the Old Testament. Of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done in it. So the mark is being put on those that are grieved by the abominations and the sin. Abominations, remember, that's idolatry, among other things. To the others, these other angels, he said in my hearing, go after him through the city and kill. Do not spare, nor have pity. Utterly slay old and young maidens and little children and women but do not come near anyone on whom is the mark. Now, do you want that mark? That mark protects you against the judgment. Friends, you've read your Bibles. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, an angel of judgment went through the land. Only those that had the mark of the blood survived the judgment. When the children of Israel came into the promised land, Rahab, who was a Canaanite harlot, but she accepted Jehovah. <laughs> There's hope for all of us. Amen. She was told before Joshua comes and blows those seven trumpets. Where do you see seven trumpets? That's in Revelation 2, isn't it? Before Joshua comes and blows those seven trumpets, before the city's destroyed with fire and a shout, will there be fire and a shout? Will there be a great earthquake, Revelation says? She was to put a red rope in her window and everybody in her house was saved. Everybody in the house with the sign was saved. You want to have that sign in the last days, friends. We need to be under the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen? We need to have the seal of God. We need His law written in our hearts. This is what it's talking about. And then it goes on to say, and begin at my sanctuary. Judgment must begin at the house of God, Peter says. And if judgment begins at us, what will be the end of them that obey not the gospel? So there's even a judgment that starts for those who should know better in the church. You're hearing the truth. This is what Revelation is talking about. There's so many fairy tales about this out there. It's just it's, it's uh, sickening to see so many people deceived about what the Bible's really saying. 